Dreaming Out Loud is increasing access to healthy food and improving community health through the crops it grows at its farm and through the bellies it feeds through its cooperative program. During the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, the nonprofit served over 250,000 meals to the community. Today, I'm joined by founder and executive director, Christopher Bradshaw. Good to have you here today. Thanks for having me. So your organization is obviously trying to tackle food insecurity, but you're also trying to close the wealth gap and the economic insecurity gap that already exists in DC. How does your community supported agriculture program or CSA program try to try to affect that and close that gap? Yeah, absolutely. So our Black Farm CSA has many stakeholders. One, folks who are struggling with food insecurity. Uh, B, I would say uh, folks that are searching for sustainable employment and, and, and finally, uh, farmers who need sustainable revenues. And so we really work to weave all those different impacts into the Black Farm CSA. Uh, for folks that uh, need access to fresh, healthy produce, you know, folks can come pick up at a farmer's market right there uh, in front of Kelly Miller Middle School. Um, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. every Saturday, we're, we're out uh, selling the produce that we grow at the farm at Kelly Miller, but we're also able to deliver that where folks live, work, and play. Um, so we can drop off at, you know, a community center or a church or uh, another faith-based institution. Wherever folks are, we can reach them. Uh, and all that activity helps us to procure from uh, black and brown farmers and socially disadvantaged farmers from across the region and other farmers that share our values, uh, inclusion and equity. Uh, and along the way, we're creating jobs for folks within the communities that we uh, are a part of and, and are situated in. And so we really want to build in as many impacts as possible uh, with the Black Farm CSA that can help people not only be fed uh, physically, but fed spiritually and holistically uh, and driving community economic development at the end of the, of the day. Farmers are entrepreneurs. You know, we often don't think of it that way or speak of, of farmers in that way. Um, but knowing that there's someone that's going to buy your product at the price point that you need and, and uh, make it easy for you to connect those dots between their products and the customer is one of the gaps that we fill. Um, and that helps farmers to be more uh, predictive in terms of what they're putting in the ground, knowing that they have a customer that's going to buy it. Uh, that means that they can be more predictable in terms of the revenue that they generate uh, and, and better plan um, and make, make better use of the land. Uh, and then finally, that helps sustainability so folks can retain farm land, um, so folks can uh, advance towards land ownership if they're not already in that situation. And all those things are, are powerful impacts that drive uh, wealth creation uh, over time. Um, and that's the kind of impacts that we wanna have, multiple layers for multiple parts of the community. And speaking of sustainability, um, you report that about 100 years ago, 14% of farmers in the US identified as mixed race or black, but today it's only 1.4%. How, how did that occur? And how does the DREAM program kind of try to work on those numbers? Right. So that occurred through the violence of uh, uh, racialized violence around uh, land and wealth. Um, you think about lynchings. Lynchings were actually crimes of uh, economics oftentimes uh, when black farmers were able to um, coming out of chattel slavery and coming out of sharecropping were able to um, become some of the best farmers around. And so when those um, you know, advantages that we gained in, in our oppression uh, became uh, profitable, uh, some folks wanted to take uh, the opportunity to find ways to disempower, uh, to dispossess Black folks of that land and that wealth creation over time. And so you have other aspects of public policy, whether it's redlining or discrimination with the U.S. Department of Agriculture, to be able to access uh, loans and technical assistance that could drive, you know, mechanization or other aspects of, of market access. Those things compounded themselves to uh, uh, drive the racial wealth gap. Uh, you look at uh, other aspects of discrimination in uh, the employment markets and what have you, all these things compound themselves and, and put us in a situation where we are today, where communities often don't have the uh, income levels to support farmers um, at the uh, price points that they need to sustain their farms. And so we sit in the middle and have to bridge some of these gaps so they can make uh, long term solutions. Uh, again, 
driving long-term repair um, through both public policy as well as the action that we control with our pocketbooks, our pocketbooks and our wallets um, to drive you know, long-term uh, bridging of the racial wealth gap and equity overall. And can you tell me how your organization is kind of working to, to dispel that, that gap specifically to maybe encourage more um, people of mixed race or, or black people to become farmers themselves? Right. For, in order for that to happen, farming has to be a profitable enterprise. Uh, that means folks need the, the right price points for uh, what they're producing so that they can uh, retain their land, so that they can pay their uh, workers fair living wages. And it has to be a prospect that is worth going into for young people. You know, the average age of a Black farmer is more than 64 years old. Um, we have a general um, problem with uh, farmers aging out, but we have a very acute problem within our community that we believe that if you can make it a viable future for someone, then they'll go into that field. Um, but you have to have pathways for, for that to happen. And you have to have a sustainable, viable uh, living wage and opportunities within that field. And so we're doing that by several different ways. We have the Dream Black Food Fund, where we've subgranted more than $140,000 to Black farmers, food makers, and producers, um, helping folks um, across our farmer network to build wells, hoop houses, and to build capacity so we can make these things true. Uh, and that's um, all connected to a part of an ecosystem where we're driving revenue to them, to them as well through not just our Black Farm CSA, but our wholesale operations. Uh, and very soon we'll start to roll out some other products where folks can you know, vote with their, with their stomachs uh, to buy soup or granola or salad dressing um, that drives revenue to those farmers that our community is able to produce deep within and situated within communities and then employing folks that wanna be a part of the solution and drive more jobs and wealth creation in their own community. Really great work. If someone wants to know more about your organization, what is your website? Where can they go? Yeah, they can come check us out at dreamingoutloud.org uh, or follow us on social media at D-O-L-D-C across Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and all other platforms. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today and best of luck to you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Check us out csa.dreamingoutloud.org and get your Black Farm CSA today.